It was a joke. Don't be so uptight. No, I never said that. Think again. I wasn't trying to offend you. On the other hand, I was trying to help you. You're overreacting. You're wrong. That never happened. You're being paranoid. There you go again. You're being so ungrateful. You're imagining things. You owe me. If you've heard one of these phrases before, then you've been affected or have experienced gaslighting in your life. Whether this happened to you in a relationship or you've heard this in your everyday life, we've all come across gaslighting. But what is it really? In this episode, we're going to analyze where gaslighting comes from. We'll break down how it works and try to unarm abusers once and for all. Listen along. Hello everyone and welcome to Overreacting the Podcast. I'm your host Michelle Ceriso and every week we overreact to important topics regarding intersectional feminism. The phrase you're overreacting is a perfect phrase to describe what gaslighting is but there lies a lot more behind it. So let's just dive right into it. Let's analyze what gaslighting really is. Right, so you're claiming Trump won the popular vote. No, Biden did. President-elect Biden, the victor. Right, don't you support Trump? I have never supported Trump. Check your tape, Bob. It's James and you were part of Trump's campaign. Who's Trump? Gaslighting is basically one of the fundamental tactics of abusers because gaslighting is basically a form of emotional manipulation that can break any person ever. This tactic plays with the emotions and the self-confidence of a person, forcing them to question their thoughts and their sanity and also distorting their reality, making them think as if there's something wrong with them or that they are constantly forgetting things. The term gaslighting actually comes from the 1944 film Gaslight, in which a husband tries to drive his wife insane and make her believe that she's crazy in order to cover up a big secret. If I could only get inside that brain of yours and understand what makes you do these crazy, twisted things. Gregory, are you trying to tell me I'm insane? It's what I'm trying not to tell myself. But that's what you think, isn't it? That's what you've been hinting and suggesting for months now, ever since... Hmm? Since what? Since the day I lost your brooch. Coining it from this film, the meaning has always been manipulating people into believing that they are exaggerating or imagining things. Gaslighting happens every day. You might know gaslighting from abusive relationships and red flags, but this also happens in everyday life. So, under friends with family, and we don't even realize it because sometimes it's unintentional or sometimes it's just indirectly well hidden. It could also be a dictator who's using gaslighting to make people believe that there's nothing wrong with the government. It might be also done by sociopaths and especially by bullies, which I think affects the majority of us. Bullies are the ones who mainly use it because after all, they're also abusers. People who use it want everything to revolve around them. They think highly of themselves and have a lack of empathy towards others. These people are considered to be narcissists or people with narcissistic personality disorder. If you don't know what that is, then let me tell you. The term comes from Greek mythology. Narcissus fell in love with his own reflection in a pool of water and died rather than pull himself away to eat. Your ego your self-gratification drive your desires. Because of these traits, they want you to also think highly of them. And if your reality doesn't match their sense of how wonderful they are, they will do anything in order to make you feel like your memory isn't correct and to change their view of how they see you into an idolized and highly presented image of themselves. Generally, also people who gaslight others are people with low self-confidence, with personal problems, or people who feel inferior. If we want to make it more gender-based, if we look at abusive relationships, it's mostly men who abuse women. In statistics, it's 97% of men are abusers. And mostly it's because they have the feeling that because of you know the social expectations and gender stereotypes, 
that say that they have to be the man of the house and keep everything in order. Many of these men think that they have to oppress their partners in order to be superior and be the man of the house in the end. This is one of the biggest reasons why men are mostly abusers, but it doesn't have to be gender-based. This was just an example. It's generally just people who want to be in power and who also might enjoy seeing others go through pain. If we look at it from an everyday perspective and distance ourselves from abusive relationships and we look at everyday gaslighting, like bullies for instance, they also do it to feel empower and to cover up their offensive and disrespectful behavior towards you and they do that by deflecting from taking responsibility over their action and words that they've done towards you because they have problems themselves and might have personal issues and low self-esteem and so they need to put others down in order to feel superior and they gain power by making you question your reality and take advantage of you to not make you aware that you're the victim. Why am I using the pronoun you when I'm talking about this? Because even you can fall for gaslighting. Anyone can fall for gaslighting. This is a very huge misconception that people think they have immunity from gaslighting because they have a superior intelligence or they would never let others manipulate them. But gaslighting goes far more deeper than something that you can control. And so anyone can be affected by it. Of course, people who already have uh, low self-esteem or insecurities, they are more susceptible because they have the feeling of needing to be polite and being liked by others. They try to give and give and give and give, even if it means receiving the least possible in the process. And they put other people's comfort first. And so that already gives abusers and gaslighters an upper hand because they can easily feel superior to you. So that is why gaslighters mostly take advantage of the more insecure people. But that doesn't mean that other people who are confident can't be susceptible to gaslighting. That's completely wrong. Because gaslighting is a slow process. It's a step-by-step trying to unsteady your confidence and stability. The more they give you insecurities and the slow they do it, the more you get used to those comments or whatever they do. And you don't really realize that they are manipulating you by ingraining it into your brain slowly without you realizing it. And that is why confident people can also be susceptible. So no matter whether you have a high intelligence, whether your personality is confident or outgoing or introverted, whether you have a different income level or no matter if your family background, you are susceptible to gaslighting. And I'm pretty sure that you have been victim or have experienced gaslighting in your life at least once. Now let's talk about how gaslighting works. I'm going to be giving you a little step-by-step stages of gaslighting, how this manipulation works, how abusers and gaslighters manage to ingrain that feeling of insecurity into your brain and show you how this is a slow process. And maybe you can even recognize any of this pattern in conversations that you have from now on or conversations that you've had in the past and kind of figure out if you've been gaslighted or if you've gaslighted others. That's also possible. You need to know that this doesn't happen in this order, that gaslighting does not happen necessarily in this order. And not everything that I will be naming must happen in order for you to be gaslighted. So the first stage of gaslighting is that the gaslighters create a negative narrative of the victim, making them think that they are doing something wrong through making little comments and constantly criticizing them or giving them false accusations of things they've apparently done. These comments can be hidden and also the criticism may be hidden with humor or or just generally might not appear as an actual criticism or accusation. But how you can recognize it is if it's constant. If they're constantly bombarding you with joke criticisms, then you need to look out for that because it might be the first stage of gaslighting. What I really want for this birthday, actually what I wanted for quite a few birthdays. Okay, okay, Rapunzel, please stop with the mumbling. You know how I feel about the mumbling. Blah, 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 blah. It's very annoying. I'm just teasing. You're adorable. I love you so much, darling. The second stage is that they keep repeating these comments, these lies that they've spread about you. They keep repeating this over and over again. 
so that it emphasizes and makes the victim feel like it's their fault it starts to innest in your brain that there's maybe something wrong with me maybe their criticism is actually telling me that i need to get better at doing something but the victim doesn't know what which leads me to this third stage when the victim does feel like there's something wrong with the relationship or with the conversation that's going on and the victim calls the gaslighter out the gaslighter mostly gets defensive or they deny the evidence by saying no i didn't do that or no i never said that then also turning the tables on the victim calling them liars and them abusers or gaslighters and also guilt shaming them saying things like yeah but i didn't do anything like how could you even think that what do you think of me i thought you loved me or i thought we were friends that is basically them turning you into the person who has hurt their feelings and the one that they should be angry at and the one that owes them an apology even if it's the other way around trust me i know what i'm oh come on enough of the lights rapunzel you are not leaving this tower Oh, great. Now I'm the bad guy. Through the constant attacks by the abuser or the gaslighter, they become discouraged, fearful, self-doubting of their own reality. They're tired to defend themselves from criticism and maybe also defending their families because now they're completely insecure and they're questioning what is wrong with the relationship without being able to point it out. And so this insecurity about whether their actions are fair towards the gaslighter or whether their brain is intelligent enough to remember things that the gaslighter is saying never happened, they start to also develop a bit of shame because they're not being able to remember things correctly. And they might get the fear that the gaslighter will not take them seriously. It reinforces the feeling of owing the gaslighter more and it creates an emotional instability because they don't know what to think or feel. And this can all lead to depression, to low self-esteem, because the victim doesn't want to hurt the gaslighter's feelings, either because they're fond of them or they're friends with them or they simply just want to be polite. And so they start second-guessing themselves and they get this deep insecurity inside of them. There's something I want to tell you. Oh, Rapunzel, you know I hate leaving you after a fight, especially when I've done absolutely nothing wrong. As we get to the fifth stage of gaslighting, this also helps the abuser or the gaslighter to create a codependent relationship with the victim's instability and insecurity that helps them to manipulate them easily and gain control over their relationships by making the victim do whatever they want. In abusive relationships, for instance, we can talk about sexual coercion, where they force the victim to have sex with them, even if they don't want, but they make them feel like they owe them sex because they keep forgetting things or, or they're constantly offending the abuser. And so this makes the gaslighter force them through emotional manipulation to do their bidding this gives them also the power to alienate the victim from other people their family or friends if the friend or the family isn't the abuser and isolate them from the outside world and keeping them in this little spider web where they are constantly feeding them with negativity and negativity that the victim just loses completely the ground under their feet and just gives the gaslighter free game to control them you're sure you'll be all right on your own? I know I'm safe as long as I'm here. Stage six, it's the gaslighters giving the victim a false hope, which is at times treating the victim with false kindness and remorse, making them or others on the outside believe that they are not being abused, which reinforces the victim's confusion and also their hope that things might change in the relationship or things might change in the environment. But this only discourages the victim to seek help or talk to family and friends because they think, I really was just imagining everything and, you know, this is a normal relationship and I was making myself too many thoughts. And this just is the goal of the gaslighter or the abuser. It's to dominate and control the relationship, to lie 
and coerce the victim into a state of doubt and fear and making them vulnerable to manipulation. And that's what they manage by going through all of these stages of gaslighting. Now, I've been very focused on relationships in these like stages of gaslighting, but this can also be applied to everyday gaslighting and also bully gaslighting. Now, to make it more visual for y'alls, the greatest example of gaslighting in a movie was Rapunzel. We have Mother Gothel, who has her relationship with Rapunzel and who kidnapped her as a baby and put her in a tower, locked her therein all her life to feed from her power that she has through her hair to keep herself young. Now, what did Mother Gothel do to keep her there all those years? She gaslighted her. It's interesting because she does exactly all the stages of gaslighting. She kept feeding Rapunzel with lies and making small comments in order to belittle her self-esteem and created a false narrative of the outer world to disturb Rapunzel from her reality in order to make her stay forever. She kept making up horror stories about how the people outside the tower had sharp teeth and were disgusting and they wanted to kill everyone and hurt them even if she didn't know anything else apart from that. And that is exactly what the abuser does. This made it possible for her to create an environment where she's in full authority, but she also showed every now and again her kind side to not make Rapunzel suspect anything, giving off a mother role vibes and saying constantly that she's the one who knows what's truly best for Rapunzel, which can be heard throughout the whole songs called Mother Knows Best, which is basically gaslighting at its finest. Whenever Mother Gothel got confronted by Rapunzel, like when she looked at the floating stars and said, I want to see them on my birthday, Mother Gothel always went to the defensive side and kept making herself the victim to make Rapunzel feel bad and making her believe that she owes Mother Gothel an apology, even if it should be the other way around because Mother Gothel hasn't given literally anything good to Rapunzel by locking him up in a tower and apart from the whole world and feeding her with lies. Everything I did was to protect you. And what shows how deep her manipulation goes is seen in the final scene where Mother Gothel, spoiler alert, falls out of the tower and Rapunzel leans in to try and catch her. At that point in the film, she knows everything that Mother Gothel has done to her. All the manipulation, that she was kidnapped and that Mother Gothel has only done bad things to her. But still, she still saw her as her mother, even though she did so many bad things to her. And that just shows you how messed up Mother Gothel has made her brain by allowing an abused child to feel remorse for her abusive mother. So that movie is perfect for seeing what gaslighting does. So how does the victim feel throughout all of this? Obviously, the feelings vary from person to person and I don't want to generalize. But the ones that I found most on the internet and during my research were mostly a change of personality that you don't recognize yourself anymore from how you were before you entered that relationship or you met that person, that toxic person. You feel isolated from other people. You feel like you don't remember when you last had a conversation with your family or didn't see another face except for your partner or your friend that's manipulating you. You feel like you're always apologizing, over apologizing for everything as if you feel that you don't know what you're doing and your level of politeness and no wanting to offend anyone else is as high as a skyrocket. You find difficulty in making decisions. You question your response to your gaslighter. You care more about what they feel than what you feel. You believe that you are oversensitive and that you're overreacting to everything and feeling that everything you do is wrong. Now, if we want to look at everyday gaslighting, it's very similar to relationship gaslighting. But I want to make an extra point on that because it still has its differences. I want you to see that Even though different, it still has the exact character of gaslighting. And I want to give you a personal experience through this because I think that makes it more down to earth and then just giving a random example. So this has happened to me. I was made fun of and I confronted them. I was like, you talking to me? You talking to me? I felt my Robert De Niro channeling inside of myself. And then they went on trying to make me think as if I had the problem and that I didn't get their joke 
um, that what they said, you know, making fun of me, I was supposed to take it as a joke and just put my like hurt feelings aside just to get their stupid joke. And by doing so, they were trying to make me feel as if I owed them the apology for being ignorant and stupid of not having laughed at their joke. And then you're faced with a dilemma here. Because if you insist on your truth, they will ridicule you and talk bad behind your back, saying she doesn't get any jokes and oh, she's so stupid for not having gotten the joke and they're so overdramatic and exaggerating. So you don't want that, right? You don't want to be talked bad about behind your back or anywhere because you might lose your reputation or whatever. So you think, maybe I should have not spoken. But then, even if you don't speak and you apologize to the guests that are doing what they want from you, you still get ridiculed and made fun of behind your back. Because in this version, they will also say, oh, they're so stupid for just ceasing so easily and being so susceptible and easy to manipulate. And there you also risk losing your reputation and your possible future friends. So in the end, in both versions, the gaslighter always wins because they still get the upper hand and they're the one who are laughing at the end, no matter whether you speak up or you don't. And that is because they have created this environment of power where they are the rulers and can get away with everything they do and they don't have to worry of anyone fighting back because the majority of people will end up apologizing since, you know, apologizing is better than coming off as rude because we have been taught that we need to be polite and kind to others before being kind to ourselves. So they win at the end. They always win. And that shows you how deep is your love and that shows you how deep gaslighting goes and powerful it can be even how powerful bullies can be they win because you end up feeling powerless in both situations more people need to realize that they don't owe gaslighter shit staying at that point how to get help for gaslighting the most important thing is recognizing that you're being gaslighted in the first place that is why i'm doing this episode about this because i've seen many people being gaslighted in my surroundings and and most of them have always downplayed it just to not get in trouble and you know because they didn't want to offend them and it hurt me deeply because Internally, they were suffering. the not being able to defend themselves from bullying. It's like when you're playing chess and your king is exposed to everything. You have no peasants and the only person you can move is the king. And you're surrounded by the opponent's chess piece. And you're not able to defend yourself from the attack. Because if you do move the king, you might get killed easily by the other chess pieces that are perfectly organized to knock off your king. So it's exactly that. It's powerlessness and that burns you up internally, knowing that you can't do anything about it. And it hurts me seeing them struggle. So that is why I'm talking about this. And you need to talk about this with your families and your friends as well. If you see somebody being gaslighted, tell them so that they are aware. Because knowing gives them the power to make a decision. It's better when you know you're being gaslighted than when you don't know. Because then you could be capable of doing something. And you don't feel as powerless. If your friends or your family are the ones gaslighting you or your friends and family don't manage to help you in any way or they don't realize that you're being gaslighted because the gaslighter has gaslighted them too, you should consult a psychiatrist or a psychologist to talk to with about your fears and doubts. Or you can find help online, on websites, on hotlines. There are so many videos of gaslighting that explain it perfectly and um, can make you help understand better. You need to understand that your feelings are valid too. You can't keep draining yourself just to be polite to people who don't deserve your respect. Your bully does not deserve your respect, your politeness. Why do they deserve an apology from you when they're the one who should be giving it to you? You don't need their approval. They just want to hurt you. And even if you think they might become nice someday, they will not. If you keep giving them what they want, if you keep giving them that feeling that you need their approval to be valid and to be a person to be respected, then they will keep going forever and they will never change. So put your foot down and remember that you are important too. And remind your friends and everyone around you of that too. Tell them that their feelings are more important than some bullies' expectations of you. Did I mumble? 
Mother? Or should I even call you that? Rapunzel, do you even hear yourself? Why would you ask such a ridiculous question? <laughs> it was you! It was all you! So yeah, we've come to the end of this episode. Recommendation of the week this week is Tangled, to stay in topic. You probably have seen it before. It was directed by Byron Howard and Nathan Greno and came out in 2010. If you've already seen it, you can watch it again and try to see it from the perspective of gaslighting. I have to say it's a really great representation of it. Huge hats off to Disney for such an evil villain. So yeah, if you want to know how gaslighting works visually, watch Tangled. Well, guys, I hope you like this episode this week. I hope you're having a great day. I wish you a wonderful week. I'll see you next week. Take care of yourselves. Look after yourselves. Look after your friends. Be kind to yourselves. And, you know, don't forget, you're not overreacting. But gas lighters might. Okay, bye.